This video is by Mark Kingston from the ARA Institute of Canterbury in Christchurch, New Zealand. Okay, so this video here is on how to draw a uh, rectangle around transition. I've said here that it's drawn in third angle projection with an isometric development. Here's the isometric development on the left hand side. Uh, the third angle projection, well third angle projection, the plan is always drawn up above uh, the front elevation. We use uh, third angle projection in New Zealand. That's why I'm drawing it. Uh, some countries use first angle projection. Uh, so it's for a rectangle to round. So I've got a rectangle to round or a square to round here made out of steel with a square flange on the bottom and a round flange on the top. Bit of a rough photo, but that's what we're going to make. Uh, most of you will be drawing it with dividers, compasses on um, steel or some form of metal or maybe plastic. I don't I don't know what you're going to be making, but um, or you could be just drawing it on paper, um, and you will be using those sorts of dividers. So uh, the pattern that I've drawn here um, is offset to one side, so you can see the circle uh, is offset to the back face or the top face of the rectangle, which means that I have to do two, uh, well, in this pattern, I'm, I've got the joint line on either side here, which means I have a small pattern on one side of the joint line and a large pattern on the other side of the joint line. I've done that simply to show you what to do. Uh, if the joint went through the other way from um, the very centre to the very centre at the bottom, this right-hand side, if it was flipped over, if it was a mirror image, it would be exactly the same as the left-hand side, and you'd only have to develop one pattern, and then you could scribe around that um, and use it as a template to get your other half. But I'm trying to explain how these things work. So I've drawn it with the joint line offset to one side so that you get a bit more of an understanding of what we're trying to do. So um, down at the bottom here, well, actually, if I turn the dimensions on for a start, where are the dimensions down here? If I go into here and turn those on, you can see what size it is. Uh, it's 350 wide across the top, it's 280 in, in depth. The offset, the circle was offset to one side from the back face to the center of the circle is 105 millimeters. And it has an elevational height here of 225 millimeters from top to bottom with a flat top and a flat base. So as you can see, I projected out to this side here, the elevational height, this line from this pink point to this pink point at the top here down this line is exactly the same as the 225 millimeters. And we need that to determine our, our lengths, uh, <coughs> excuse me, for marking out our pattern. So what I've done and what you need to do, <coughs> excuse me, um, is take our lines uh, across here, all these different lines here, they are the ones we need plus the joint line and we take those as a length from point to point with your dividers or your compass and you're going to step them across this bottom line here from this uh, point, this pink point in the corner across this line to the outside. So what I've done is I've, to speed the process up I've already done some of the lines. Uh, the ones that I'm actually missing or the one that I am missing, not some of the ones I'm missing, is this line here. Um, C3, that's the one I want. So you would set your dividers from the pink point there to the pink point there. You'd set that, uh, you'd divide your compass to that length. You'd come down to the bottom here. You'd step it off from that point and you'd scribe an arc on this line. And you can do that with AutoCAD. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I've been eating almonds. It's giving me a bitchy throat. So you could scribe a line across here and you could just put a little wee arc on it. AutoCAD, you can do that, but I find it very cumbersome and I just draw circles. So the one I'm missing, I've done everything else. I just need this line here, C3, and I can turn the properties on. And down on the bottom here, it tells me that the length is 179.51 millimeters. So I'm going to come down to that line, uh, C for circle and type in 179.51 enter and just around that I just draw a small circle 8 millimeters and then I trim off my large arc which goes right across my drawing which I don't want and get rid of that and I'm going to get rid of that as well uh, and I'm actually going to color code those ones so I don't get them mixed up I'll put that on to 
uh, hidden detail, and this line here is the one that I want. So I need to number that line in text. Uh, a little box here, and I want eight millimeters high. And it's, uh, the line was uh, C to three. Uh, capital C, just to be really pedantic. Do it again, because you're not putting the caps on. C, there we go. And that one is sitting in there like that. So there's my lines, my true length lines. I can actually run my lines back to the top. So I'm just going to draw some of these in from E9. Next one is E8. I see that E8 actually is a uh, broken line, so, but it's okay, I know where it is. Uh, C3. So these are the true length lines that we're going to use. I won't draw them all in, we'll just miss a few out. The point to explain about this pattern, uh, the distance, actually I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight that, do a dim linear, and the point from that distance there, from the joint line and this one here is exactly 175. These two lengths are 175 as you can see, which means that uh, because it's a right angle corner and the circle is uh, in the center of that corner, these two lengths, uh, E to 6 and E to 9 are exactly the same length as uh, E to 7 and E to 8. Uh, so if you come down the bottom corner, you'll see that I've done E to 8, but I haven't done E to 7, simply because I know that they're exactly the same length. So I've got E to 8 here, but I haven't got E to 7. And the E to 6 is exactly the same length. What did I say is E to, sorry, E to 9 is exactly the same length as E to 6, and I haven't got that down there uh, either. But because the this dimension from this pink point to this point is 175, and this way it is uh, across to here. This point here is 105. These four dimensions or four lengths had to be worked out individually because uh, C to 6 and C to 3 were not the same length, and C to 4 and C to 5 were not the same length as opposed to this corner down here. So Enough talking, let's start developing it. We need to start with a baseline. We'll do the top half first. So this baseline is 350. So on the sheet or on the drawing, I'm just going to put a line in here at 350 millimeters long. And I'm going to number it. You must number everything really clearly, otherwise you can get into problems. So that corner there is C. And I'm going to pick up uh, B, uh, Control C, Control V. So that point there is B. So what I'm trying to create is this triangle at the top. Uh, let's color code it. We'll put a hatch into it, will we? We'll just do that very quickly. And uh, just to highlight what I'm trying to do, pick a point, these two points here. And so this is the triangle I'm trying to do. It has a baseline of B to C, and then from C up to 3, and B up to 3 creates my triangle. So those links are C to 3, I said C to 3, and that is that line there, and I'm going to do the properties, and it tells me that it has a length here, got my pen and paper, of 287.83, and that was C3. So it's a mirror image on the other side, so get back onto the sheet. Where am I? Up here. Um, so a circle. 287.83 and it's exactly the same from the other side so there's my point and I'm drawing a line down to there and exactly the same on the other side you can see I've drawn large circles once again you can put a very small arc at the top let's just do that you would draw a little arc like this we'll say it's 20 mil long and then you're going to trim out from that so you would end up with a little little cross there like that to determine your point with swinging your compass from C and swinging your compass from B and you'd get an intersection point. That point is number 3, so I'm going to highlight that, Control C, Control V, and I'm going to put that point up the top there. That's right, jump around. So the next dimension I need is these distances from... Um, 
how am I going to do that? Dum, uh, sorry, dum linear uh, from point three to four. Uh, okay, so we'll do a line. Sorry, dum aligned three to four, uh, and it's exactly the same as the other points. Four to five is exactly the same length. So you can see that they're both 33.65. I'll get rid of that. So I'm going to write it on a piece of paper, 33.65. And get rid of that and get rid of that. So up the top here, I need to scribe a couple of little circles or a circle. Uh, 33.65, uh, which means that the diameter should be... Where's my diameter? 67.3, that's correct. Okay, so what I need to highlight was that the line C to 3 and B to 3 are exactly the same length. Now down on the drawing down the bottom, I just called it the true length line. I've simply called it, uh, what did I call it? C to 3. That length is exactly the same as B to 3. You could number it. Don't really need to. So the very next line I want is C to 4. This line here, we take this dimension here. We step it down across the bottom. And C to 4 is that line. So I need to draw that line going from C to 4 up to the true height. And that gives me my elevational height. And I'm scrolling in and out. So properties tells me that it's 270.74. So I take that dimension up here, draw a circle on this side. What they say, 270.74, and exactly the same out the other side, 270.74. So there are my next points. Little circle here at 8, and little circle here at 8. So I'm going to get, uh, trim the big ones out, sit on that, sit on that, get rid of that, 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 and that. So there are my next points, and they are point number four. Come down here, grab number four, control C, control V, and just number those up there. Uh, repeat, paste. So there's my next lines. So the next one I need to scribe my little circle again, which is going this time from point number four across to point number five. So that was a dimension of, what did I say, 33.65. Yeah, 33.65, scribe that circle. That circle out the other side is again. Now the next line we want, uh, we're creating this triangle. We've already got this line. I've just drawn a line from 4 to 5, where it's an arc. So we we're looking for the length of C to 5. Take that dimension, step it down the bottom here. C to 5 is this line here. It tells me it has a length here of 264.53 millimeters for C5. So we take that dimension up the top here, scribe a circle here. What did I say? 264.53. What did I do wrong there? Let me have a look at that again. Did I type in the wrong number? I wasn't looking. I was looking at my, excuse me, my piece of paper. Recent input circle. Uh, what did I say? 264.53. There we go. Not looking at the computer properly. Same on the other side. Draw my little circle, which you won't have to do. 8mm. Same on the other side. And trim those out. Trim. Get rid of those. Uh, and it's number point number five. So I need to grab number five. Control C, Control V. Up the top here. What have I done with it? Control V. And there's point five. Same on the other side, control V, 0.5. So 
next triangle that we're drawing, we've got uh, B, C, uh, and we want point number six. So we want this line. We're going to set our dividers to that. Come down to the bottom here. So it's this line that I haven't drawn in. C6. Put my line from there up to the elevational height. And that line has a length, if I highlight it, on the left-hand side of 271.57 millimetres for C6. Just write that on a piece of paper. So up here, uh, circle, sorry, 271.57. And next one. 271 exactly the same and then we had to have our small circle uh, from this point here which was 33.65 and other side exactly the same call my little arc around there 8 mils same on the other side 8 trim those out Get rid of those little circles. As I say, you won't have those. And that was point six. So come down here and grab point number six. Control C and Control V. Up to here, there's six. And we'll do the same on that side. So we've got our points up across the top. We'll draw lines into those points. So we'll start at four come back down to C, back up to 5, and then from uh, then from 6, back down to C. Same on the other side, 4 down to B, up to 5. So what we need, we're working on this last triangle here. So we've got C to 6, and we want from C to D, and we want 6 to D. So uh, with the base being absolutely flat on the bottom, this is a true length here. So from C to D, I know it's already 105 mil. So, so out on that side, draw a circle there, 105 millimeters. And same on the other side. So the circle has a radius of 105, which you'd set your dividers to. And then what we need is the length of this here. So it's coming from the bottom. The rectangle is on the bottom. It's rising up to the top point uh, on the uh, point 6. So you'd take that length and you step it across the bottom. It was D6, so I stepped it across the bottom. Uh, it's actually already this line because it's right on the edge of the pattern, so I can highlight that line. Uh, and it tells me that it has a length there of 250.45 D6. So if I highlight that line and then I also hit this line here, D6, it's got exactly the same length on it. That's why I know that it's accurate. So, uh, what they say, so that's going from 6, and we're looking, this circle here is actually um, the line, this circle is called, you know, it's an arc for the circle um, B to, uh, on this side of the pattern, A, which is exactly the same length as C to D on this, this line here on this side, from C to this point here, D, it's the same length, because it's a mirror image from uh, B down to A. I'm just going to turn that off. So that's why we're, we're working that out. So what they say, it was 250. We're going to start from the top and work back down. 250.45 and do exactly the same from 6. 250.45 and what we do is we draw our line in from that point across to that point and back to that point and do exactly the same on the other side down to our intersection and back across to here I can get rid of these circles they're no longer required so this this point on this side is actually A 
control C, control V. So that's point A. And the other one on the other side is D. Control V, sorry, control C, control V. So there we go, and I can draw an arc across the top with a spline. You would simply, you might have a, a um, flexi curve, French curve. Uh, didn't do that right. SPL for a spline. So going across the points here, just drawing an arc in. You might have a flexi curve, you might have a stainless steel roll or a piece of metal, and someone's going to hold it while you draw your arcs across those points and that's how you get your line on the top there so that's the pattern for the top one the top half of the pattern uh, we'll stick that there and I really need to do the base as well how many minutes we're up to 20 minutes so we'll do the base as well just to uh, let you know what I'm doing so we're trying to work, we're going to start with this line here again, so out on the right hand side we just draw a line again, it's 350 long again, 350. And this, this pattern up here, I've laid it out so that the face that we're looking at is the inside. If I lay this one out I need to change my numbers over uh, to the opposite side, otherwise it will not have the pattern. Uh, in the right uh, view, I would have the outside face of the pattern. Which so you really need to think about which face you're looking at when you come to form it up in a you know a folder, box and pan folder, straight folder, uh, or a press break. You need to know which face you're looking at. So E to E to what I'm trying to work out is this triangle. I've got this baseline and I'm working out these two lengths now because they're uniform. They're sitting in the centre. E to nine is the same length as F to nine. Let's write this, this line out here, properties, and it has a length here of 305.53 millimeters for E29. So I'm going to come up over here and draw my arc at that. So circle 305. What to say? 53. Exactly the same from the other side. And draw that in. So my top point there being, get rid of this box over to the other side of the screen, move it all together, control C, control V, so that's point number 9 at that point there. Then we take our distances on this side, 9 to 8, 8 to 7, 8 to 6 is exactly the same as 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6 on that side. I've already told you that it's 33.65 millimetres. A little circle here with a radius of 33.65 millimetres. The next line I'm trying to work out is um, uh, this line here, D to 8, uh, sorry, E to 8, which is exactly the same length because it's a uniform pattern on the corner, uh, is the same as E to 7. So E to 8, this line here, get the length of that. Write it down, so we've got uh, 291.59 equals E to 7 plus E to 8. So, back up the top here. Uh, circle. So we've got a radius here of 291.59. And exactly the same on the other side. Now I'm not going to not going to uh, trim these circles out because this line here represents uh, 0.7 on one side and point uh, sorry it represents 0.8 and I need to redo that circle because the true length 33.65 and exactly the same on the other side 33.65. So now what I have get rid of this box again it keeps getting in the way this side here on the E side. Control, sorry, Control E, Control V. On the E side, this is point uh, eight at this point here, and point seven. 
control C, control V. And this point here is point 7. The other side of the 9, we have the 10. So control C, control V. Uh, that is point 10 there. And we want point number 11. Control C, control V. Sorry for scrolling in and out. It's probably making you go cross-eyed. So there's our points for those points. I'm simply going to draw a line from 8 back down to E, back up to 7, and from 10 down to F and back up to 11. And I'm going to get rid of all of those points. So there's our points. And the last one we need is line uh, E to 6, which is the same as F to 0. And it was actually this line here. It's already this line here, so I'm going to scribe my arc back out at that on both sides because E was the same. E to nine was the same as E to six. Small circle from point seven, thirty-three point six five, exactly the same on the other side for the from point eleven to back to zero, thirty-three point six five. Draw my line in from that point back to there that point there back to there get rid of those you'll have little arc marks on the sheet I don't need it for what the way I'm doing it so on the, uh, the F side of the pattern capture that zero and that's a zero point and on the E side of the pattern we want six uh, uh, what is it? Control C, Control V. Getting off the screen a bit. So what I need now is this distance. Um, get rid of that dim linear from E back to D is 175 millimeters, as you can see. So I'm scribing that radius from E 175. Exactly the same on the other side from F175. And then what we need is our joint line length again, A to 0, which is exactly the same as D to 6. And as I said to you, I marked it across here and determined this joint line. But because it sits right on the edge of the pattern, these two lengths, uh, you're looking at the true length line anyway. Uh, if I hit properties for that, all three. Uh, why didn't it do that? Probably looking at the wrong number again. So D to 6, it had a length of 250.45. 250.45. Draw my circle. 250.45. Same on the other side. 250.45. Draw my lines in. From F to D back up to 0, from 6 to D, get rid of those, I said something wrong there, actually the D side, the E side has a D, copy that, and put that there, whereas the other side of the pattern actually has the A, copy that, so on the F side of the pattern, we have the A. Draw my joint line across the top as a spline between these points, 6 to 7 to 8 to 9 to 10, 11, and finishing there. So that's my curve across the top. My corners should be... Uh, 90 degrees. What did I do wrong there? Dim angle. This corner here should be 90 degrees. This should be 90 degrees. It's the way you tell if your pattern is drawn correctly. This should all be 90 degrees. There you go, they're all 90 degrees. That tells me my pattern is right. So Uh, this bigger portion is uh, the pattern, 
on this side of the joint line, obviously the smaller pattern is the other side of the joint line. So that's how you would draw out your two halves. Take your lengths from the top here, step them across your baseline and back to your true length height. And then that gives you your true length lines that you run up from your points at the bottom uh, in both patterns once you've worked them out uh, to lay your pattern out. Your lines around the top, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6 came from exactly off these points at the top here, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6 because this circle was flat on the top as the rectangle was flat on the bottom. So there's our two lines. If it was on an incline, if it was coming down on an angle for one of them, you'd have to work out true lengths for that. So that's how you do a rectangle to round. We're up to 30 minutes. I want to stop. I want to hold you up. So hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to develop a pattern for those sorts of things.